I see a lot of questions and confusion over the intersect feature that Lightroom Classic, Adobe Camera Raw, Lightroom Cloud version, it's in the masking tools uh, over what that intersect feature does. Because a lot of the tools in that whole masking section are pretty intuitive, but intersect, I don't really think is. So I put together this video, I got a landscape portrait and a wildlife example for you. So you get a little bit of a feel for what intersect is, how it works, and then a few different examples on how you can use it on your photos. So let's go ahead and jump in. So I've got a couple photos open inside of Lightroom and we'll do two examples here and then I'll jump over to Photoshop Camera Raw and I'll do a landscape example. So you see how this works in a couple of different places. We're going to start off in our masks panel and I'm going to take my radial gradient. Of course, you've got to be using the um, past, you know, October 2021. You've got to be using that version of Lightroom Classic. Also works in the cloud version of Lightroom. Also works in Adobe Camera Raw. So you've got to be using one of those versions to see this. So we go to the radial gradient here. I'm going to show you a very simple example. I'm just going to make a big circle and make it really, really dark. All right. Again, this isn't real world, but this will help us figure out what intersect is doing. Now what I'm going to do is go to this radial gradient, click on the pop out menu and choose intersect with brush. All right. You get all the same options as you're creating a new mask. All right. What we're going to do here is just intersect it with the brush. And then watch what happens as I paint outside, nothing happens. But as I paint inside, we start to see the adjustment. So what we're, what we're seeing here is we were only seeing the adjustment where our two selections, if you will, whatever you want to call them, mask selections, are overlapping with each other. We basically we had a radial gradient and we said intersect it with the brush, which means you're only going to see the results of where the two of those intersect with each other. All right, so keep that in mind. That's a very, very simplistic example of it, but it should hit the point home on what Intersect is doing. So let's delete all masks there. So how could we approach this photo? We could go to select color range. Let's say I want to select her shirt and do something, change the color of it, make it brighter or darker. It's green. So I'll go to color range and I'll just make a color selection there. And you can already see the problem is it's selecting all the other greens in the photo. And of course, I could use my brush, I could subtract, I could do any number of things to try to remove the, the green, to try to remove whatever adjustments from the rest of the photo. But Intersect can actually work pretty good here. So let's go back a couple of steps. And instead, what I find works best with Intersect is to refine my selection first. So get as close to, to the area as you want. So in this case, I go to Select Subject. Now I've got a selection of her and I can, again, change the color, do whatever I want to do here, but it's obviously affecting more than just that. But what about if I intersect it with, so I'll click on the little pop out menu here. I can intersect with, and I could intersect with color range, right? Cause there's nothing else on her that's green really. So I could intersect with color range and select the color range and watch what happens. Look at her face. Cause her face is very green right now. So look at her face. See, so what I just did there is you're only seeing the effect where my select subject and my chosen color range intersect with each other. That's where you're seeing the results of this adjustment is where they intersect with each other. So as I make changes here and make changes here, you can see that now in this case, there's a little bit of reflective light on her hair, which is why her hair is, is, uh, it's changing a little bit here. Not a lot. But just to show you, nothing's ever perfect. Don't ever look, it was very, very difficult to find a one click solution for anything here. Uh, just to show you what you could do now is choose subtract with the brush. And then I could just come up here and paint and get rid of that. And it's nice and easy because her hair is very, very separated from her sweater. Where when in that original example, when I did color range and it was bleeding from her shirt into the background and everything, that would have been pretty painstaking for me to go there and try to trace that around with my brush tool. So that wouldn't have worked really good. Now, uh, before I go to the next example, I just want to call out one thing. And that is, I know the keyboard warriors are lining up to say, Matt, couldn't you have done a select subject and subtract this and this and this? Yeah, guys, there's five different ways to do all this stuff, right? Don't think that intersect actually can't be done 
three to five other different ways here with your masks panel. I just wanna show you what the tool does. Each one of them has its own purpose, so you've gotta decide as you're starting to work which one's a little bit easier for your workflow. But just understand right away that there is not just one way to use all of this stuff. There's no rule to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete those masks. Let's jump to a wildlife example. So same idea. I'm not even gonna bother doing color range. I wanna maybe work on the body of the bird here, brighter, darker, change the color. I'm not even gonna bother going to color range because you know what it's gonna do. It's gonna select the bird and the background. So instead, I'll do what I did before, select subject. That gets me close. I'll go to that sub layer inside of there. I'll click on the pop out menu and I'll intersect it with, and this time I'll intersect it with a brush. All right, so I'll intersect it with a brush and now I'll paint and now you're only gonna see the intersection and it's not perfect, but it's close enough. You're only gonna see the intersection of where my brush painting intersected with the select subject. Now I have access to that part and I can go in here, whether I wanna make it brighter, whether I wanna make it a little bit more yellow, whatever, whatever it is you wanna to do to that part of the photo, you now have an easier way to get to just that area. And just like before, you could go to subtract, I could take my brush, and you know, I could have been a little bit more perfect about doing it in the beginning or just clean it up with a little bit of subtraction here at the end. This is a perfect time for a very quick word from our sponsor. So promise I'll keep it fast. Uh, if you're just getting into these masking tools and you haven't really gotten to see the power of all of them yet, uh, I encourage you to check out my Lightroom Masking Deep Dive course. Uh, these tools I think are the biggest changes to hit Lightroom really ever. And they make editing, for me personally, they make it more fun and they make it faster and they give me less reasons to jump over to Photoshop to need to make selections. So it's a learning curve. I totally get it. It's, it's definitely a different way to do things, but I made this course. It's very affordable and it's very quick to watch. It's not seven hours long. I made this course to help you get through that steep learning curve a lot faster and really start enjoying these tools. So check the link in the description and I hope you'll take a look at that masking deep dive. Back to our tutorial. Let's take a look inside of Photoshop Camera Raw. I've got a photo open, so I'll go filter, Camera Raw. If you had a raw photo, it should open automatically into Camera Raw. So we'll look at a landscape photo here. I don't use it as much on landscape photos, but in this example, you could we could make a case for it. So what I wanna do is work on the trees, both in the above the water and in the reflection here. All right, so let's go to our masking tools again. Whether However we came into Camera Raw, they're all right there. Well. What could I do here? I could go to luminance range. That would be a good one. And I could select select my luminance range here. I probably selected too much. Let me try that again. So let's go select a little bit less this time. And it's still, still selecting too much. I could always reel in my luminance range. I could do that. The problem I'm gonna face is there's gonna be a lot of overlap between the luminance range that I work with here and even some areas in the sky. No matter how much I try to get that in, the biggest problem is gonna be some of these dark areas of the sky are gonna overlap with the trees and there's not gonna be a good way to get rid of them precisely because there's a lot of detail, edge detail there. All right, so let's undo that and let's go back. And instead what I could do is again, refine this as much as I can. So I'll do select sky now I don't want the sky, but what I do want to do is get the sky out of this. I don't want it any part of my selection. So now what I can do is just invert that. So now I have everything selected but the sky. All right, let's we can make this a little bit brighter if we want to. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave it as the red overlay. I think that actually shows it off pretty well. Now that I have that, now I can go and intersect my select sky, which is actually the inverse. It's almost like select foreground. I could intersect that with luminance range and I could just go in here and click on that. And now what I've done is I've eliminated that part of the sky and even in the reflection from being part of the selection. And of course I could still go down here and refine this luminance range. We still have ways to do that. So I could refine this so it just gets into the tree area down there. So maybe something along those lines. And then I could come in here and make it a little bit brighter maybe add a little bit of contrast to it, warm it up a little bit, and even increase the saturation. So, but what I did here is I gave myself a really precise and fine-tuned way 
to work and, and direct my attention toward a very, very specific area of the photo. And I found the intersect feature for that photo helped me do it the best way. Now, if you're new to these features, if maybe you're just picking up this intersect video and you haven't really dove into all the other stuff, I've got a free video right here on YouTube. It's actually 20 minutes long, but it is much more in depth into what these masking tools are, what they do, what they, uh, how to use them, all that fun stuff. So if you haven't seen that one yet, that would be a great place to go next.